If you're a Guns N' Roses fan and you think Sweet Child of Mine is a good song, you're wrong. <laughs> According to Slash, anyway. Let me explain. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose, and by the way, thank you for 1,000 subscribers. That is both awesome and cool of you. Sweet Child of Mine is undoubtedly Guns N' Roses' biggest hit. It's the sort of song that transcends the band that created it. You could have no clue who Guns N' Roses are, but still know every word to this behemoth of a song. It remains their only US number one, pretty much every magazine under the sun calls it one of the greatest guitar tunes of all time, and it helped their debut album, Appetite for Destruction, sell over 136 trillion copies worldwide. P probably. According to Duff McKagan's autobiography though, Slash always believed Sweet Child of Mine was the group's worst song. But why? If Stairway to Heaven was the anthem of the 70s, and Smells Like Teen Spirit was that of the 90s, then Sweet Child of Mine was the global anthem of the 80s. And all those songs have something in common, don't they? Cobain hated performing Smells Like Teen Spirit, Robert Plant wasn't a fan of Stairway to Heaven, and yeah, Slash hated Sweet Child of Mine. The song itself was a result of messing about at a rehearsal in LA. Slash, being Slash, was fiddling around with his guitar, entertaining his bandmates when he came across the riff that would lay the foundation for a global mega phenomenon. As you do. Izzy Stradlin started jamming on top of it and then Axl Rose chimed in with some made up lyrics and before they knew it they had pretty much written Sweet Child of Mine. Just like that. Despite its obvious popularity, Slash was not a fan of the track. He thought it was too soft for the band. It was an up-tempo ballad, which didn't fit what Guns N' Roses was all about as far as I was concerned, Slash would say about the song. You see, up till this point, Guns N' Roses had garnered a reputation for being some proper bad boys. The band was synonymous with danger. In fact, Rose himself described GNR as the most dangerous band in the world. All right, mate. They built a reputation of badassery on the Sunset Strip in LA, embracing their vices, inciting chaos, taking inspiration from the likes of The Clash and Aerosmith. Around the same time, Motley Crue, Twisted Sister and Quiet Riot were on top of the industry, slotting into the affectionately named genre, glam or hair metal. Because of the, you know. Guns N' Roses wanted to be anything but this. They were edgy, they were toxic. They still had the hair, but ignore that. They were dangerous. So when Sweet Child of Mine was released, a decidedly softer offering from the band compared to tracks like My Michelle or Welcome to the Jungle, Slash felt it to be a departure from this image of danger. There's also another reason he hated the track that I bet you didn't know. Although sober now, back in the late 80s, Slash enjoyed a little tipple here and there. However, once the band started adding Sweet Child of Mine to the set list, he soon discovered that the riff was incredibly difficult to remember when smashed off his face. It really disturbed my drinking, he told Total Guitar. Now, despite all this negativity towards the track, it did have some redeeming features, according to Slash. There's the guitar solo. But that's it, actually. That was the one thing. He did also say in later interviews that the track had grown on him, and he had began to like it, and I can't possibly imagine why. Can't think why he would change his mind like that, no idea whatsoever. A couple of years ago, the track surpassed 1 billion streams on Spotify, and also it was the first music video ever to reach a billion views on YouTube. This song plays a huge part in keeping the band relevant, nearly four decades after first releasing music. It's this continued popularity that enables the band to keep banding. In 2016, they embarked on the third highest grossing concert tour of all time, the Not In This Lifetime tour, which brought in over $500 million. Yeah, I'd get over my doubts of a song pretty quickly if it was bringing in cash like that. What do you reckon though? Did Slash have a point with the hatred towards that song? Let me know in the comments below. And check the video on screen for the Led Zeppelin songs that Jimmy Page hated. And I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.